Hey guys, welcome back to another video. And today we're going to be solving the lead code question task scheduler. Okay, so this question might be a little bit confusing. So I'm just going to directly go into the examples and try to explain what's happening. Okay, so in this question, we're given uh, certain tasks, right? And these tasks can be, these tasks are capital letters in the alphabets, right? So for example, A represents task A, and you can have these tasks repeated for how many ever amount of times. Then you're also given an N value. So in this case, we have N equals two. So what does this N value actually mean? So this value, what it means is that before the next task can happen, so in this case, so let's say A happens over here, and before A can happen another time, there must be two instances where A does not happen. So in the time where A is not happening, there can be some other task going on or there, it can be idle. So when it's idle, nothing is going on. So in this case, we have A and before the next A comes, B takes place and we also have an idle place because nothing is taking place in that case. And only after that, we have A. We have A is repeated after every gap of two. Similarly, even if you look at B, B is repeated after every gap of two. So before the next, so B happens here, and before the next time B can happen, there is two gaps. So there's two times where B is not happening. So over here it's idle, and then we have A. The output we need to give for this question is going to be the length of whatever we have. So over here we have A, B, and then idle, A, B, idle, and A, B. So we need to return the output of this. So we need to take the task, we need to factor in this n value, and whatever list we have in that case, we need to return that output. So in this case, it's eight. All right, so this is our question, and now let's see how we can answer it in the best way. So there's some sort of pattern that we can find in this problem, which we can use to solve it in the fastest way possible. So let's try to uh, look at that pattern and find out what it actually is. So let's say, for example, we're given this as our input and we have an n value of 2. So our first step is going to be some sort of dictionary or something which counts the frequency. All right, so I'm just going to call that frequency over here and let's count how many we have. So how many A's do we have? We have 1, 2, 3. We have 3 A's. Now let's look how many B's do we have. So we have 1, 2, 3, 4. We have 4 B's. So as you look at this question, what you should understand is we only care about whatever has the highest frequency. So once you factor in everything for whatever has the highest frequency, then everything else just falls in place. You only need to factor in whatever has the highest frequency. So now we're going to do that. We're going to look at what has the highest frequency. So in this case, we have one with a frequency of three and one with the frequency of four. So obviously four is greater, so the highest frequency is four. Now we're gonna look at one more thing, which is how many tasks have the same frequency as the highest frequency. So in this case, so I'm just gonna call that number of tasks with highest frequency. Right, so in this case, it's basically asking how many tasks have the same frequency as the number four? And the answer is one. Only B has that. So B, so that's all we need to care about. So now let's look at how our answer might actually look like. So we have this, this is gonna represent our answer. So we're gonna have B. So because we're starting off with B since that's what has the highest frequency. And we have a value, a n value of two. So that means before the next b can occur, we need to give it two spaces. So we don't care about what is happening here, but it's not going to be b. So we have two spaces and then we have b again. So two more spaces and then we have b again, two more spaces and we have b. So now we have one, two, three, four b's. So we accounted for all of the b's inside of our answer. So now what, uh, so, the truth is what goes inside of these blanks don't matter at all. But just for this question, I'm gonna fill these out just so you can kind of understand what's happening. So I'm gonna put an A over here, A over here, A over here. So that takes care of all of our A's and everything else is gonna be a null. So this is just gonna be an idle period. But like I said, what 
we only care about is the maximum element. So now what we're going to do in order to find the length is we could just count it, right? So we have a length of 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, and 10. So our answer in this case is 10. But how can we get that number, right? So what we're going to do is we're going to split this up into sections. And how are we going to split these sections up? We're going to split the sections from the first time we see B. Or, and to be more generic, we're going to see the first time any of whatever has the highest frequency task comes into contact. So in this case, we have B. So we're going to start off with B and go until we reach the next B. So this is going to be a group. And we're going to sort our groups like that. So all the groups are going to have a length of 3. So we're going to sort this. So three elements go here, three elements go here. And we can't account for this one since it only has one task in it. So now let's see. So now let's find the length of everything starting from here all the way until over here. How can we do that? So we can simply, we can take how many groups we have. We have three groups over here and each group has three elements. So let's just write that. So we have three groups, right? And each group has three elements. So we have three multiplied by three, and that gives us the length of nine. But the answer is 10. So now what we're going to do is we're going to add this number over here to whatever we have so far. And this is the number of tasks which have the highest frequency. So in that case, only B has the frequency of, the, of four. So we're going to add that, and that should give us our answer. So 3 into 3, 9 plus 1 is 10. And that's our answer. So this is a very specific formula. So now let's make it more generic. So how do, can we get this 3? So this 3 is the number of groups we have. And that is nothing else but whatever our highest frequency is. So in this case, our highest frequency is 4. So we're going to take our highest frequency and we're going to subtract that by 1. And that will give us how many groups we have. And why are we doing 4 minus 1? Because if you see, uh, we have B over here. We have B over here, 2, 3, and 4. So we have B with the frequency of 4. And only three, 3 of those Bs are inside of our groups. And one of them is always going to be out. So it's just going to be the highest frequency minus 1. Okay, so now we got the number of groups we have. And now we need to see how we can get how many elements do we have inside. So this is also pretty simple. So one group consists of B and two other things. We don't care what these other things are, but they're just two other random uh, numbers or tasks or whatever, right? So how can we get this number as well? So we know for a fact that we one of them is going to consist with the task which has the highest frequency. So one of them is going to consist of B. So we have one uh, always. And the other two depends on what the n value is. So in this case, the n value is 2. So we're giving two other elements. So in this case, it's going to be whatever the n value is plus 1. So our n value in this case is 2. So we're going to do 2 plus 1. And now you must be asking, where does this last element come from? And that's just going to be the value of how many tasks have the highest frequency. So in this case, only one task, which is B, has the same number as our highest frequency. So we're just going to add that plus 1. And you might be asking, well, why is it separate? Well, that's because let's say we have two elements which have the highest frequency. And in that case, this is going to become 2. And I'll just show you an example of that case as well. So as it is, so this becomes 3. So 4 minus 1, 3. 2 plus 1, 3. So 3 multiplied by 3 plus 1, which also gives us our answer. So we can use this more generic formula in order to get our answer. So I'm just going to show you one more example which uh, with which I'm pretty sure you'll understand it completely. So let's say that we're given this as our input. Now we're going to follow the same steps as we did earlier. So we're going to have a frequency counter which counts our frequency. So A has a frequency of 3 and B has a frequency of 3 as well. So now they both have the same frequency. Okay, so now let's see what is the highest frequency. So highest frequency is what? 
Well, they both have the same frequency of 3. So the highest frequency is naturally just going to be 3. Cool. Now we need to find out how many tasks, so number of tasks, which have the highest frequency. Sorry for the bad handwriting, but yeah. So number of tasks which have the highest frequency. So in this case, what, how many tasks have the frequency of 3? So A has a frequency of 3 and B also has a frequency of 3. So the answer over here is going to be 2. So now let's see how this is going to look. And like I said earlier, all we really even care about is the whatever with the highest frequency. So let's just make it A and then two empty spots since N is equal to 2. Then we can have A again, two more empty spots and then A again. So in a case where we have two or more tasks with have the same as the highest frequency, we can also just add that. So let's just say we have B. It doesn't really matter, but I'm just going to show you how it looks. So we're going to add the B here, two spaces, B again, two spaces. And now what's going to happen is the B is going to get added over here as well. So this is where we added this number, right? So over here we have A, B instead of just A. Since we have two things which share the same number as the highest frequency. Okay, so now let's do the same thing we did earlier. We're gonna break it into groups. So we're gonna start off from A, go until the next A. And this is everything which is empty is just gonna be null, right? I'm just not writing it, okay. So similarly, we're gonna go from year and until year, and this is gonna stay empty. So how many groups do we have? Two, and that's nothing else but highest frequency. I'm just gonna write it down, highest frequency, minus 1, which is 3 minus 1. All right, cool. So we got that. Now we're going to multiply that with how many elements do we have inside. And that's just going to be n plus 1. So over here is n plus 1, which is nothing else but our n is 2 plus 1. So that's how many elements are there instead of each group. So that is going to give us 3 minus 1 into 2 plus 1, which is 3, uh, which is 2 multiplied by 3, which is 6. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and 6. We still need to account for A and B. And what that is, is just going to be, we're going to add whatever the number of tasks are with the highest frequency. So that is going to be equal to 2 in this case. So plus, so number of tasks with highest frequency. I'm not going to write it fully, but... And then what is that? That's 2, so we're going to add 2 over here. And now let's do this completely. 3 minus 1 into 2 plus 1, 6, plus 2, 8. And if you counted, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. And we got our answer. And now let's see how this looks in code. Let's see, the, the thing about this question is the code is really simple. It's just whether or not you can find this pattern and understand how to make it into some sort of formula, uh, form, a generic formula to use. All right, so let's just get into the code right now. So our first step to solve this question is to have some sort of dictionary which is going to count how many times each task appears. Now, you could use the counter from the collections module. It will just be a one-liner, but I'm just going to do the full thing because uh, I kind of just wanted to avoid using the collections module and do it from scratch. Okay, so frequency is equal to an empty dictionary. So now we're going to iterate through all the tasks. So for task in tasks, now uh, we're going to see, so if task not in our frequency, then in that case, we're going to add it. So frequency, task, and then we're going to give it a value of 1. And then else, if we do see, if it's already there, so then frequency, task, we're going to increase its frequency by 1. Okay, so now we're going to have a dictionary with the frequencies. So now what we're going to do is we're going to have a list which is going to include all of the frequencies, only the frequencies. So we don't care about the key. We only care about the value. So I'm just going to use list comprehension to have this. So frequency, and we're going to see, so we only need the value for key comma value in frequency dot items. So this is going to give us all of the values. So like I said earlier, we don't care what the task actually is. We just need to know what the highest frequency is. So now we have it inside of a list, which is easier to manipulate. So now we're going to have a max frequency like we talked about earlier. And to do that, we're just going to do max and then frequency. That's it. Now we need to see how many tasks 
have the same frequency as whatever the max frequency is. I'm just going to call this max frequency tasks, right? And over here, I need to count how many times that occurs. So I'm just going to use the dot count function. So frequency dot count and then max frequency. Okay, and now that we have this, we're just going to return our answer, our the formula that we came up with. So it's going to be the max frequency. So max frequency minus one. So that then we're going to multiply that with n plus one. And then we're going to add this. So max frequency tasks. So this is going to be what we return. But one thing we need to understand is this function is not always going to give us the answer. For example, there are a few cases where it's going to give us a value which is smaller than the length of our tasks. So what we're going to do is we're going to find the length of our tasks. So length of tasks. And we're going to return whatever has a bigger value. So let's say the uh, formula does end up giving us a smaller value. And in that case, we're just going to return the length of the tasks. So let me just show you what I actually mean. So I'll just remove this for now and then I can add it back again. So I'm going to submit this. Our answer is not going to be accepted. Okay. All right. So this is supposed to be value over here and let's just go down and submit it one more time. Okay. So as you can see in this uh, question over here, so we have n equals to zero. And in that case, when you use the formula for n equals to zero, we're going to get a smaller value. We're going to get a value of four. And we're also going to end up with this problem when n is equal to one and in a few other cases. So just to solve this, like I said earlier, we're just going to return the maximum between the length of our tasks and the formula that we came up with. And this should solve our problem. So now let's submit this. And as you can see, our results did get accepted. And finally, just let me know if you have any questions or if you have a better solution to solve this. And, uh, and if there are any lead code questions that you want me to solve, just let me know down in the comments below. And thanks a lot for watching. And don't forget to like and subscribe if this video helped you. Thank you.